This is going to be the first video of a little series that's going to be focusing heavily on UI. Specifically, we're going to be working with HUDs and basically their performance. So ultimately, widgets can be set up in a way to where they can be really a lot slower than I think you might realize. So they can really be a lot bigger of a performance hog than a lot of gameplay features that you may have. So in the widget that we're going to be working with right now, that's not really going to be an issue, even in its very unoptimized format, because one, PC hardware is just that efficient and it's that powerful, it can run through it no problem, and two, we don't have enough going on to where it would really influence a difference, but I figured it would be simple enough to where I can show you the steps that I see a lot of people do, as is, to really go through and improve it. And this is something that I did temporarily in other series way back, well over a year and a half ago, just for the sake of it being quick and simple. So what we're going to do for the well, throughout this series is we're going to take this in its unoptimized form. We are going to slowly step through and improve it more and more and more until we really can't make it any faster. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick little rundown of the setup. So this is going to be a very basic ammo display so we can see our total ammo and our current ammo. We have two functions on fire, which is, again, this is the default first person template in case that wasn't obvious. So we have the default on fire function. I made another function called reload just to replenish our ammo. And then we have two getter functions. So get total ammo and get current ammo. So these are pretty much just what is going to be. Uh, these are basically what we're going to be calling to get the information that we need for the time being. So then over here on the widget side of things, we have our total ammo here. And the way that this gets updated is we have bound it to a function, as you can see here. So here we have get TX box total ammo. And that corresponds to these functions here. So as you can see here, this has been called pretty much on every frame. And same thing for current ammo. So they, this one calls get current ammo. This one calls get total ammo. However, these two functions are actually blueprint functions that I made to simplify it. So if we take a peek at them, what we're doing is basically on each frame, we are getting our player, the first player character, because this widget is local to us. This is always going to give us our character. We are casting that to our first person character. Then we get our current ammo. We create a custom string out of this. So we basically are doing current ammo colon space then appending our current ammo to it, then we convert that string to text, and that's what gets input out to the or put into the text box. Same exact thing for get total ammo, except the string's just different, and we're calling get total ammo instead of get current ammo. So that's pretty much all that is going on. Not really a whole lot. However, this is about as slow as you can get it, because one, blueprints are just slow. Two, widgets are again just slow. And three, we're doing this on each tick. So basically every single frame for the UI to update. And we're also casting. Casting in Blueprint is also something that's not particularly fast. So in the end, we end up with a result that looks like this. So hopefully this isn't too loud, but every time we shoot, as you can see here, our current ammo updates. And then we have our total ammo, so when I press R to reload, it decrements from total ammo and resupplies current ammo. So you can see everything updates immediately the second we shoot. Because again, these two text boxes are basically pulling for changes on each tick. So this is where we need to go ahead and do our first optimization. So one thing we can do is instead of pulling for each tick, we can make a drastic improvement. Like, a when I say drastic, I mean a drastic one, and convert this to be event-driven. So basically, any time that we shoot, we update current ammo. Any time that we reload, we update total ammo and current ammo. Now, these first few improvements are going to be done strictly through Blueprint, and then later on, we will be moving to C++. So let's go ahead and begin with this. So in our graph, what we can do is we can add two new functions. 
going to add function one, and this one's going to be called update current ammo. And what we're going to do here is basically we're not going to add any input or output. We want to duplicate or actually scratch that. Let's fill this out first. So we can close these. I'm going to do the exact same thing that we did in get current ammo. We're going to copy all of this, paste it in. And then we're going to grab our current ammo, that text box. We're going to do set text. And the text that we want to set is going to be our current ammo. So let's go ahead and do the exact same thing. So we're going to grab our get total ammo, create a new function called update total ammo, and do the same exact thing. So let's do set text and plug everything right on in like so. And now we just got to go ahead and unbind these. So remove the binding, remove the binding. And then we can see it currently no longer works. So now we have to call these two events. So our update current and update total ammo. So what I'm going to do is let's go to our character blueprint like so. And what we can do is set up for starters we can deal with our reload. So we have our widget that we're creating here. Now we just got to go ahead and actually store it. So what I'm going to do is promote the return value of the create widget to a variable. So that way we have it as a reference that we can use right here and give it a name of w underscore HUD. So this is going to be indicating that it is our HUD. Now when we press reload, we can go ahead and get our HUD and call update total ammo and update current ammo, like so. So each time we reload. And then it probably wouldn't hurt to actually, let's go back to our HUD really quick and let's go to the event graph. And on construct, we are actually going to call, again, update current and update total ammo, just so that they appear. So when we press play, you can see they are the correct values. So right now when I shoot, it doesn't update our current ammo, but when I reload, it updates our total ammo. So we need to set up some form of a way to basically trigger a change in current ammo whenever we go to fire. So we need to set up an event. What we can do is in our character, where we have our on fire, I'm actually going to add another one actually going to real quickly let's rename this to fire because that makes a little bit more sense in my opinion and let me just fix up the definitions and then when I have another one so you function blueprint implementable event just given the category of tutorial and call it void on fire and that's it so whenever we go to fire what I want to do is at the very end here that should be right here i'm going to call on fire so let's go ahead and close down the editor save and relaunch then go ahead and reopen your blueprints and now if we head back to the character if we right click we should have an event on fire like so now what we're going to do here is grab our hood and our update current ammo function like that and now hopefully whenever we shoot as you can see it decrements and then when I reload it updates total ammo and current ammo just like it's supposed to so everything is just as responsive and we honestly got a tremendous performance benefit just from that alone so honestly it's not noticeable but it's because we're doing again something so small but if this was Let's say the impact of this was, you know, a hundredfold. Let's say this by default at the very initial configuration cost us, let's just say 50 FPS. Well, this now just bumped us back up to well, a tremendous amount more. So basically, instead of having to constantly update this string or this text right here for each text box on tick where we're going through 
and we're casting our character, constructing a string directly from it, and then setting the text every single tick. We are now only doing this whenever we shoot and whenever we reload. So aside from that, nothing else is running. So there's no logic being added that is going to take away from anything else. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and delete the other functions here and just leave it like such. So that is the very first optimization that we are going to do. And ultimately, it is quite a big one. In the next video, we'll expand on this even farther to try to improve it. So in that case, I'm going to end this off here and I'll see you in the next video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patrons, as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos, such as this one. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to hop in my Discord that is also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.